What I'm interested in is uh, how the brain solves problems where you have to move and you have to predict where something's going to be in the future. How does the dragonfly sort of intercept this prey while it's moving? How does the whole system work? How do the collection of parts come together? I'm Anthony Leonardo. I am a systems neuroscientist here at Genelia Farm. And so we've been working on this problem for the last five years in dragonflies. The reason these types of questions haven't been asked before is partly because people haven't thought of them, but partly the tools don't exist to address them. The great thing about IDNF is we can basically invent apparatus that does not exist. Most of the time, I'm walking a hall, going from one lab to another, and somebody will suck me in, pull me in, and say, hey, I got this idea. I like that. I like that environment. My name is Jason Osborne. I'm an instrument and systems designer for the Instrument and Design Group. And we are standing in IDNF, Instrument Design and Fabrication. What we do here is researchers come down and they have a specific problem. So they, they basically need a method or a system or some hardware to be developed. We have a wide range of expertise from electrical engineers to systems engineers, mechanical engineers. We try to solve just about every problem that they ask us. We're trying to measure something while the behavior is happening. We want to record from the neurons. If we're going to record from these neurons while the dragonfly is flying, we need to be able to put some sort of payload onto the animal. I had some sort of back of the envelope ideas on roughly how it would look. And so I made my first trip to IDNF to talk with Jason about, well, how can we take this and make an actual device from it? I'm really good at making things really tiny. I want to put real tiny little device on an animal to record neurons or what have you that will come to me for that. We'll sit down. I'll have uh, some conceptual ideas, maybe the equivalent of a drawing on a napkin. And then we'll sort of just toss ideas around. He'll go off into his own space and really think through the real design process and make the, the real machine drawings and so forth. Anthony Leonardo, he wanted to have these little tiny antenna made. And the antenna are basically a few times larger than a human hair in diameter. If he's doing uh, tracking of these animals, he can't have variation in the antenna. I can make them accurate every single time. It's going to work and the science is going to move. The end goal of all these little devices is to build uh, this thing here. So this is a little one of these backpacks that we make. It's light enough that the dragonfly can carry it, but sophisticated enough that it can sort of broadcast like a radio the signals from these neurons in the nervous system of, of the relevant neurons that we're looking at. Success. In IDNF, we think of the researchers as customers. However, there are certain scientists where over time you build this relationship. It's a friendship. They start to trust you. They trust your decisions. They pull you into their research. It really makes you feel good. It makes you feel like you're really contributing to the science. And I think that's really important. I mean, it could be dragonflies, it could be something else, right? But I mean, as long as I'm here and Jason's here, I mean, I think we'll always be kind of working like this on one project or another. They said it all. Wow. I'm just making it up. Wow. Again, I'm. You not, should be an actor. Not, none of it's true. But <laughs> <laughs> we are actually our enemies. The pond, I've, never, arch I've never forgiven him for the pond thing. <laughs> no. I'm not the one that actually put the fish in the water, though. No, I know.